Welcome back, everyone, to Einstein's Eyes. Uh, it's good to have you here. I'm Carl Rosen, Oculoplastics and Neuro-Ophthalmology in Anchorage, Alaska, at Ophthalmic Associates for the past three decades. I'm with my co-host, my friend, my former co-resident at Albert Einstein, John Ditkoff. John? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm a general ophthalmologist. I specialize in cornea, um, and I am located in northern New Jersey. I met Carl over 30 years ago in New York, where we trained at Albert Einstein, hence Einstein's eyes. It's great to see Carl. It's great to see you over in Alaska. I'm in northern New Jersey now, so it's always good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, John. Thanks. Today, we're going to zoom in on an interesting topic, really a fascinating topic. It does affect a bunch of folks. It's called Fuchs corneal dystrophy. It affects the cornea, which is the clear part that uh, is a dome-shaped structure that people look through and that light gets through. And it just so happens that we have a cornea expert mm -hmm. in our midst, uh, John Ditkoff. Oh, I didn't see you there, John. Good to see you again. <laughs> and whether you're a patient, a medical student, ophthalmology resident, or you're just curious. So we've got you covered on this topic. So let's dive in. So Fuchs corneal dystrophy, or just Fuchs for short, it's a progressive inherited dystrophy disorder affecting the innermost layer of the cornea called the endothelium. And I'd like to show our audience that structure. This image shows the cornea here, which is the front part of the eye, as I said, which light goes through. You have the epithelium layer on top. There's five layers. You have something called Bowman's layer, which you can scratch during a corneal abrasion. You have the stroma, which is about 90% of the cornea, the clear part. You have something called decimase membrane, which is a very thin membrane, just opposed to the stroma. And then the endothelium is the layer we're talking about today. Fuchs affects the endothelial layer and creates these excrescences or gutata that affect how the endothelium or the pump of the cornea works. John, I think you're more appropriate for this yeah, so discussion. I've, I've had over 30 years of experience treating Fuchs, and I have thousands of patients with the condition. So I, I, just to give you an overview, when I explain to patients, Carl hit the really important things, which is it's a progressive degeneration of the deepest, most uh, part of the cornea. Fortunately, for all you out there that have Fuchs, I will tell you that most of you will never need any surgery, need any treatment. And that's the really good news. I have patients that I've been monitoring for 20, 30 years. Uh, maybe I noticed it in their 40s or their 50s, and now they're in their 70s and 80s, and they're fine. They have no visual symptoms at all. So the key thing about Fuchs that you have to understand is that most people never have a problem. Um, on the other hand, as a cornea specialist, I do see the patients referred to me, the small percentage of people that do have visual symptoms from it. So why does it happen? As Carl hit upon it, the endothelial layer, which has become diseased in Fuchs, and it's generally by both eyes, is responsible for pumping fluid out of the cornea. So the way I explain it to many of my patients is, your basement floods, and you have a pump that pumps the fluid out. If your basement floods every night and the pump pumps the fluid out every night, guess what? You walk down the basement, it's completely dry, everything's fine. So if the pump's working, it doesn't matter that there's flooding. So theoretically, your cornea, every time you go to bed at night and you close your eyes, it hydrates. It actually gets thicker. That's normal for everybody. But the pump in the morning pumps the fluid out of the cornea and that person's fine. But the people with Fuchs, and by the way, it was Dr. Fuchs, who named this disease, I think in the early 1900s. Uh, what's interesting about it is it's not F-U-C-H apostrophe S. If he, his name was Fuchs. So it's F-U-C-H-S apostrophe dystrophy. And the people that have Fuchs in the early stages don't have any symptoms. But for this video, we're really talking about the people that might need treatment. So what happens? So people with Fuchs will experience at the beginning, early morning clouded vision, because what happens is, Overnight, their cornea becomes thicker and their pump isn't working as well. So when they wake up like everyone else, the cornea clears up very quickly. In their case, it might take an hour or two for that, for that fluid to be pumped out. And then eventually, if the pump's really not working and they have significant Fuchs disease, you know, really significant person, and this is rare, uh, they, they, there is a treatment for it, but it is surgical. So early on, some patients will use what are called hypertonic agents 
They might put a gel in their eye before they go to bed called Neuro 128 ointment. And all that does is it dehydrates the cornea. So it, it kind of pumps the fluid out of the cornea for the person, but it doesn't cure the condition. It doesn't prevent progression. It might just help delay some of the symptoms. But ultimately, if someone's really having problems, the good news is there's, a, there's actually a really, relatively simple, straightforward treatment. So in the old days, when Carl and I were in, in ophthalmology 30 years ago, and me as a cornea specialist, my training, I did lots of full thickness corneal transplants on patients with fuchs that needed treatment. And the success rate was extremely high, but it is a full thickness transplant. We would, we would transplant their cornea. We would get a person that died who donated their, their cornea, and we would get that cornea harvested. It would be checked, and we would literally transplant from the front to the back of the eye in total into that person. And we had to put stitches in their eye and everything else. Now we do what's called a partial thickness transplant. It's much better. The success rate is much higher. The risk is much lower. And the most important thing is the rehab. Patients can have what's called DMAC or DSAC, which are partial thickness transplants. We're not going to get into details on that. But the important thing is we're just transplanting those cells in the back of the eye, the endothelial layer. So by doing that, the rehabilitation, the healing is, is much faster. Most people can see well within weeks. The success rate is much higher. So if you are out there and you have fuchs and it is causing problems from you, you should speak to your, your cornea specialist and really consider surgery because the success rate is very high. Where I did have many years of patients that would say, you know, I can kind of live with this. The risk of a full thickness transplant is so high, I'm not going to do it. And then one thing I would add, so many people go through their life with fuchs. They're doing fine. They're doing fine. So what's the number one reason why someone ends up needing a transplant is they have cataract surgery. So unfortunately, cataract surgery has great as it is. And with modern technology, it's come a long way and the success rate is very high. One of the risks of, corne of cataract surgery is we're operating right behind the cornea. So we're literally operating adjacent to, adjacent to that endothelial layer. So what happens is just the fluidics, the inflammation, the fact that you're working right behind it, some of that endothelial layer is damaged from cataract surgery. So if someone already has a predisposing condition where their endothelial layer is weak, they end up uh, oftentimes needing a transplant. So we warn people that have fuchs that are undergoing cataract surgery that there is a higher risk that they'll need uh, a partial thickness corneal transplant. So the hypertonic saline, which is basically salt water, Mira 128 works great to pull the water out of the cornea and helps clear that up a little bit faster. But you know, in the old days, some people used to use a hair dryer as well. A good point. Yeah. They would they would just take a hair dryer and dry up the cornea and speed up the process. So they would get uh, clear vision from hazy vision when the cornea And I think is... I'll, I'll just point out again, those people that do respond to that, it doesn't cure the condition. It doesn't stop the progression. But if someone's having mild symptoms and they're not ready for surgery, that can alleviate it. Yeah. And I did want to highlight one other thing. So the genetics of it, it is inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern. There's something called a TCF4 gene, which has been strongly linked to the disease. And again, I don't want to get too nerdy on everybody. There's no exam. There's no test. It's hard for you, Carl. Yeah, but, but you know, it is more prevalent in people of Northern European descent and women also associated with other corneal dystrophies or systemic connective tissue conditions. Um, so we just and want to keep that wise, in mind. Age-wise, um, it's pretty rare to see it in someone under the age of 40. I have seen it in some people in their 20s and 30s. I find most of the people, as Carl said, it's more common in women. Usually I'll start to see it in someone's 40s or 50s. And then they really won't have symptoms until 20 or 30s late, 20 or 30 years later. One, one of my big lines in the office with that Carl will like is, I have good news and bad news for you. So when I see an 82-year-old referred to me with early onset fuchs, I look at them, I say, the good news is you're not going to need a transplant. The bad news is the cornea is probably going to outlive you because they probably have 30 years left in that cornea, but they're probably not going to live to be 110. But early detection does help. See your ophthalmologist. They can diagnose this with modern surgical instruments. There's something called specular microscopy, which also can see the endothelial cells and determine if, it, if they're damaged 
or they can even count them to see if it's in a normal range. And it is a good prognosis um, for uh, you going forward. So really that's today's episode on Fuchs corneal dystrophy. We hope this brought some clarity to this condition. And please, if you got something out of this, please like and subscribe and share. John, it's great seeing you. And we will see you on the next one on Einstein's Eyes. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>